I was searching in old books on the website of worldradiohistory.com and I can advise you to go to that website. There are many, many books there. Hundreds of books, schematics, etc., etc. And in 1960s books, I found this uh, circuit. In the past, it was made with germanium transistors. Uh, and I, my idea was, well, that's a good idea to make it with silicon transistors. The good property of a germanium transistor is that it has a lower barrier voltage. And that means that it oscillates much easier and especially in these simple circuits. But anyway, uh, they are in general obsolete. Of course I can publish a circuit like this with germanium transistors. Uh, but I think it uh, has in a certain way no sense. This is a schematic and it is derived from the old schematics made with germanium transistors in quite a few books, 1962, 1965, etc., etc. And they uh, used to, uh, say, supply the oscillator um, a piece of copper and a piece of aluminum uh, put into a beaker with salt and with some bleach and uh, it could give the necessary voltage to make this circuit work but I tested it and it did not work in this case and I'm more or less sure that the reason is that I've used here silicon transistors. They need a tiny tiny higher voltage, a smaller voltage to get them into oscillation. Anyway, uh, let's go to the circuit, needle pulse generator, beeper. I've used my color pencils here and here. Uh, has nothing to do with the opening of the uh, Olympics in France today, as far as I know, or yesterday anyway. That's in a certain way not relevant. Um, here is a circuit. Two transistors, an NPN transistor and a PMP transistor. I've used, uh, you can use, that's important to tell, a BC547B amplification factor 300 NPN. And for the second transistor, a BC557B, that's a PMP transistor. But I've used a BC159B and that's also a PMP transistor. It was somewhat obsolete. But I did not have, say, enough PMP transistors in my, on stock, say, here or here. Very strange. I have to order a few of them anyway. Um, the circuit oscillates and has certain properties and especially it works between these two voltages uh, and when you go too high, say higher than 1.5 volts, uh, the, the whole circuit starts to oscillate in a kind of wild way and it means that the transistors take suddenly a high current uh, or even stop. So they get too hot, could be that they get too hot on 12 volts or so or 6 volts or 3 volts. That's the reason why you see here 0 0.9 up to 1.5 volts. I've used an old headphone capsule. I measured it. it. It measured 13 ohms. That's of course quite strange. I measured it in the circuit. And that means uh, that also this resistor was uh, in that measurement anyway. I'm absolutely sure that that headphone capsules between 18 and 32 ohms can work. Could be that you have to make a connection to ground and then I mean uh, when you want to use this, say, 
as a kind of oscillator to drive an amplifier or so, whatever. Let's look at the circuit first. I've now connected here for this capacitor that is CX, a 10 nanofarad capacitor, and that means that we are going to say high, high or higher frequencies. Let's listen. So here you see how critical the circuit is. You now hear it screaming. And we are on one volt. And we are on this waveform. Well, it must be in the order of 3 kilohertz or so. It's not stable, you can surely see it, but anyway, that's not the idea of this video to make a perfectly stable circuit. Anyway, let's listen further. When you turn here that uh, po potentiometer of 470k, the frequency changes. And why you want to make this to a stable circuit? When all is aligned, replace the dead potentiometer with a fixed value resistor. It's now kind of screaming, that means unstable or harmonics, but we can set it to other frequencies where it is stable in a certain way. Let me give my scope the triggering level. Of course my scope can trigger it. Yes, here it triggers. And this is the sound that you hear at the moment. It's, it's like I tell, a needle pulse generator in a certain way on a very very low uh, voltage. So here. Needle pulses, it, the counter tells it's 2.1 kilohertz. Well, I think it's true. So, uh, that's one first demo. I've, at first I want to give the results of all the experiments that I did. They are here. I tested it with three capacitors on voltages between 0 0.9 and 1.5 volts. The first capacitor was 470 nanofarad. And when you turn that potentiometer, you hear cricket, say, the insect, that's what I mean. Cricket sounds, small, tiny, tiny pulses in the order of, say, 18 kilohertz or so, don't know that exactly. And when you turn that potentiometer further, it goes to weeping. I also tested it with a 10 nanofarad capacitor. I cannot elaborate now because you have heard it. Frequencies goes between 5.9 kilocycles and 2 kilocycles. I also tested it with a 22 microfarad capacitor and then we have frequencies in the order of 7 hertz to 2 hertz. Say the sound of a clock that's ticking. And on 33 hertz it's a kind of, say, hum sound and uh, maximum it goes to a kind of screaming sound. I want to go to the lowest frequency. Uh, by the way, I uh, did not test that uh, completely, the, that lowest frequency, but anyway, let we let us connect here a electrolytic and then turn the potentiometer. Well, you surely hear it. Uh, now connected the electrolytic here. 
you can surely hear that sound and when I turn it potentiometer so here it goes to very very small I mean low frequencies Let's look on the scope, whether it is possible to make it visible. Well, you can see it here. These are the pulses that are now generated. And the good thing is, interesting thing is, in my opinion, that it works on 1.2 volts. Let's go to a 1.5 volts. Let's see what happens. It gets somewhat more fierce. You can hear it on the background. 1.9 volts. Surely more fierce. And also the pulses can be heard much better. Anyway, that was more or less all to tell. Thanks for watching. Good property is, of course, that this works on such a low voltage. And the schematic again. And thanks for watching.